Hey guys, Constance here from Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So, just poured myself a cup of coffee and I'm getting ready to do something that I almost never do, and that is some sewing. About four years ago, when we had first moved out here to the homestead, there were several instances where I was wearing that apron right back there. It is that sort of very simple cover you all up apron. It's got a crisscross back. Well, hello there, Miss Ava. And it is an apron that I made a long time ago. Actually, I bought the fabric. Gosh, I don't even remember when I bought the fabric. I just liked it because it was kind of heavy and it had chickens all over it. And it sat in a box for years. And then one day I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make an apron out of it. And so I created this apron. I didn't have a pattern and I just wanted a simple apron with some pockets because I'm very much about the pockets. And so I just made this apron out of my head. Like I said, I didn't have a pattern or anything like that. I just sort of made it up. Well, when we bought the farm here and I do stuff around here, I started wearing my aprons more often. I've always loved aprons but I really started wearing them a lot, of course, once we moved out here. Now, I had a lot of interest in that apron. I had people who wanted to get aprons like that, and so for a little while, I was sewing some and selling them on Etsy, but the fact of the matter is, I just did not have the time to keep up with that. Um, there's just not enough hours in the day to, to do all of the things that I would like to do. And I've had a lot of people asking about them again. And back in the spring, I mentioned doing a tutorial video and showing you how I make these aprons. And I'm going to put the instructions on my blog, cosmopolitancornbread.com, so that you can reference it uh, as well. But I pulled out my fabric and realized I already had three aprons started um, that I just <laughs> never got around to finishing. So I'm gonna take you through the process and show you how to make this really easy apron. Now, I have since learned that it's actually a type of apron. It's considered a Japanese style apron. Um, who knew? Uh, but in any case, it's very simple. It's just a bunch of rectangles sewn together. And if you can sew in a straight line, you could sew this apron. It's, I would call this a beginner level um, sewing project. I am not a seamstress. I, I, my grandmother was a seamstress, but I was not a seamstress. My training in sewing involved seventh grade home ec class and we made a drawstring tote bag. That was all of my formal training when it comes to sewing. Um, as a teenager in the 80s um, tight leg jeans were a thing we couldn't afford tight leg jeans or to go buy me new jeans and so I just went and took my blue jeans and I sewed them into tight leg jeans and so I have very much been a utilitarian type of sewer I sew things when I need to um, I made my ball gown when we lived in Alaska I sew curtains and pillows and I've made a few quilts but it's not something that I do a lot of, so if I don't know the terminology for things, uh, bear with me. So I'm going to take a couple more sips of this coffee and we'll get started. All right, so first of all, I have several of these aprons that I own and wear. This is my original one with the, the quirky sort of chicken fabric. I've never been able to find this fabric since then, and of course, I've had it probably 20 years, so it's pretty understandable. I have made this apron out of denim. In this case, I used just you know normal denim, and then I had some fabric here that was kind of this, this heavier fabric, and I just made contrasting pockets to go with it. Uh, the fabric that I use for most of these aprons is what's called duck cloth. It's a nice, thick cotton and the reason I make it out of that is it's very durable. Um, if you make it out of really thin fabric, I mean the whole point of wearing an apron is to keep your clothes clean 
and so if you're using a really thin fabric my thought is it's just gonna go right through it if it's something really messy so most of the time I make them out of this duck cloth now I have also made these aprons now this is just the fabric it's not an apron but I have also made it out of a, a lighter weight like muslin calico um, just print cotton type of fabric like this pretty fall fabric here and I've also made them out of linen so really it's you can pretty much make this out of whatever type of fabric that you would want an apron made out of um, it's really up to you but my go-to is always this duck cloth just for its durability and you know it's an apron it's gonna get dirty you're gonna wash it a million times so I figure since I don't sew very often I want to make sure I'm making something that's gonna hold up and last me I don't want to have to make a new one every couple of months you know what I mean all right and then so the other thing about the fabric is when I am purchasing the fabric that I get for the apron I will generally get one and three quarters yard of the fabric and the reason I do that is so that if you have a pattern that is on your fabric that is directional you don't want your pockets sideways or your straps going sideways you want the design to all be you know in the direction that it's supposed to be if you are using fabric that is omnidirectional it's like just a steady pattern or solid color then you can maybe get by with using a little bit less like maybe a, a yard and a half um, but if I get a yard and three quarters then I've always got enough uh, to do all of the pieces that I need to additionally there's a little bit of a buffer just in case you get the fabric home and the person who cut it didn't cut it perfectly straight you've got a little bit of wiggle room if you get one and three quarters yard fabric all right so the first thing that i'm going to do is iron my fabric and this is generally something you want to do before you start any sewing project because you want to start with nice smooth fabric uh, that doesn't have wrinkles in it because it makes it much easier to cut it into the size and shape that you need uh, you also want to wash it first that way it's pre-shrunk um, even if it says it's pre-washed or whatever it's always good to wash the fabric to begin with because you never know where it's been just saying so like I said these were aprons that were already kind of in progress so I already have the fabric cut out but the first piece the body of the apron is just one great big rectangle it is 43 inches wide and 33 inches tall so this is the first piece that you would cut from your fabric and again I'm not a seamstress I'm sure there's more formal ways of doing things but this is how I get it done so with the body of the apron the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold the edge over a half an inch and I'm going to iron it into place and I'm going to do this all the way around the apron Alright, so I have the half inch folded over and ironed into place all the way around and now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to fold it over a second time and iron it into place. And iron it into place. Alright, so I have the edges double, double pressed. Uh, folded over, pressed, folded over, pressed, all the way around. And so that's going to be my hem, my, my finished edge around the apron. So now I'm going to let this sit here for a second while I go pull out my sewing machine. All right, so now I'm just going to pick a corner to start at. Doesn't really matter which one. And make sure that it's still folded over twice on each at each corner on each side 
And I'm going to sew this right by the folded part, not over by the edge. Ava, are you going to help? Girl, move. Move. <laughs> And I can't go very fast because my sewing machine is very old and very fidgety. So I have to go nice and easy. If I don't go nice and easy, my sewing machine revolts. It already does not um, refill the bobbins anymore. That mechanism is broken. So I have this little device that looks like a little tackle box. And that's what it does. coming up to my corner so I'm just gonna put that back into place you could pin it if you want to I just find that doing straight lines like this it's unnecessary because I can just fold it when I get to that corner all right so the body the great big piece of the apron is hemmed I have the edges sewn all the way around and so now I'm done with this for the moment. Now I mentioned how I had already started several of these aprons and I've already got the straps and the pockets ready to go onto the body of the apron, but I wanna show you exactly how I made them. Now in my original apron, the yellow chicken one, I used a single layer of fabric cut into a rectangle hemmed kind of like I did the apron and then just sewn on but all of the aprons I have made since then I doubled up the fabric on the pockets just to make them extra durable and I have one right here so this is one of the big the bigger side pockets that's ready to go onto uh, the apron and the way I did it is I cut a larger rectangle double the size that I want the pocket to be plus an inch all the way around. I fold it in, in half at the top here the wrong way so the right sides were together and the wrong side was out. And then I sewed it down the side and into the middle just a little bit, down this side and into the middle just a little bit, and then I turned it inside out. So the bottom is still open and you can see the uh, finished edge in there that when I turned it right side out, I just ironed it and it's all in place just like that. So that is the bottom of the pocket. And when I attach this to the apron, I'll sew down through here, around and back up. And so while right now that's got a little bit of an opening, that'll be closed up when I sew the pocket on. So the larger pockets, I started with a piece of fabric that was nine inches wide and 20 inches long and then folded it in half into a 10 by nine uh, piece. The straps, I started with a 22 inch by nine inch piece of fabric. I folded it in half down the middle and I ironed it into place because again, I don't use pins until I absolutely need to. Folded it into place, sewed, the end and then down folded it together and then again turned it right side out now a long strap like this is a little bit difficult to turn inside out and I found the easy way to do that is to push it down onto a yardstick and that gives you a nice firm uh, surface to push the edges out slide it down and then as soon as you have it right side out you just pull the yardstick out and then again ironed it smooth and it was the same process for the smaller chest pocket. Now, if you are watching this video, you do probably have a little bit of sewing experience. Um, so I'm sure you're familiar with sewing something the wrong side out and then turning it inside out after you sewed it. But I am going to go ahead and demonstrate that technique with a scrap that I have here. Um, I kind of cut it into a long rectangle. We can kind of pretend that this is one of the shoulder straps for the apron. So I'm folding it in half the long way 
and again right side in wrong side out and I'm gonna sew it so like I said with the straps I sewed an end closed and then down the side and I left the other end open so that is what I'm gonna do here and when I'm sewing this I'm sewing it at it's about a 5 8 inch um, space from the edge of the fabric to where I'm sewing all right so that is sewn together now when you turn it right side out sometimes this fabric especially on thicker fabrics like this can kind of bunch up into the corners so what I do is I take my scissors now I've just got my pinking shears here because I don't know where I put my sewing scissors so this is a corner that is sewn right here and I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna snip off the extra the extra fabric there and I'll do the same thing on the other corner I just won't be able to cut off quite as much so I'm just going to take off a little bit of the excess just like that and so now I'm going to turn it right side out and I mentioned using a yardstick to uh, turn the strap right side out and I'm going to kind of show you how I do that so this is the sewn end right here I'm just going to sort of grab the fabric kind of pinch it and pull it apart and then tuck that end in like that stick it over the top of the ruler and use the ruler to push the fabric through and then I'll also use the, the edge of the ruler to kind of push those corners out to get it a nice square shape as well. Just like that. And then if this was the strap that I was using on the apron, I would go ahead and iron this, get a nice straight edge before I did the next step. And this technique is how I did the straps and it's the exact same way that I did the pockets except with the straps I sewed one end and all the way down the side leaving the other end open with the pockets I folded in half this way across the rectangle and then I sewed all the way down one side and then in a couple of inches whoop, all the way down the other side and in a couple of inches and I left an opening at the bottom all right, so here is where I will actually start using some pins. I'm gonna take the body of my apron, like this. I'm gonna fold it in half, right down the middle. And I'm gonna take a pin, and I'm gonna mark the center of the apron. And this is right at the, the top, at the chest, of the apron so that gives me my center and I'm sure I'm sure there's other more official ways of doing this but again I ain't a seamstress I got my center right there and now I'm going to attach all of the pockets this is the top of the apron up here and my big side pockets are going to be the first ones that I attach all right, so here's my great big pocket, and I'm gonna make sure it is right side up. I don't wanna put it on there upside down. And the pocket, the hip pocket, goes five inches from the edge of the apron. So I'm just gonna take my measuring tape here, and I'm gonna take a pin, and I'm gonna mark five inches in. And from the top of the apron, it's gonna be eight and a half uh, inches. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it right by my other pin. That way I've got a, a corner to work from. All right, so eight and a half inches. And so basically what I've done is I've marked the upper corner of my pocket. So now I'm just going to kind of slide that over there and I'm going to take my pocket and I'm going to fit it right into there. So I've got the pin that's marking the eight and a half and I have the pin that's marking the five inches. And then I'm just going to measure it down here, make sure it's still five inches. 
So now I'm going to pin it into place. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other end of the apron. All right, I've got my big pockets pinned in place there. So now I'm going to add my little chest pocket. Now I'm going to center it on the pin that I have there and I'm going to put it down two and a half inches from the top of the apron. Just like that. All right, so all of my apron pockets are now in place and I'm going to go ahead and sew these on. Now, when I'm sewing on the pockets, and I haven't always done it this way, I've, I've done them differently from time to time, I have found that I just, I really like to do a zigzag stitch. Um, I just feel like it's a little bit more durable, and that's just the way I like it. And so that's what I'm going to do here. And when you sew the pocket on, you sew as close to the edge of the pocket that you can get or as you can get, I should say. The pockets are all sewn on, got the chest pocket, we got the big side pockets, and now we're going to attach the um, straps. All right, so I've got my straps here and have my apron turned upside down, well, face down, I should say. And I have the top center still marked here with a pin. Kind of turned here a little bit, maybe you can see that a little bit better. And I'm gonna look at my straps and I'm gonna see which way the design is going. Now this only matters if you're using a, a fabric that has an up and down as far as the pattern goes. And while the strap will go over your shoulder and part of it will be upside down, I personally want the print to be right side up in the front. I'm not worried so much about the back. So I'm gonna look at this, see how the print is, and I'm gonna make sure it is right side up. I also want to look at the sewn edge because it's a little bit thicker. I want that away from my neck and I want the thinner edge um, closer to my neck. So I'm going to kind of lay these out here. Now I've got the center and overall these straps are going to be four inches apart. So I'm going to put them each two inches away from my center pin. Now, if you recall, the strap was open at one end, but sewn together on the other. Now, my sewing machine is not terribly um, sturdy. <laughs> it, it, it struggles when you've got a lot of fabric. And so I'm not going to bother turning this inside out, um, that edge, to give it a finished edge, because I'm creating more layers of fabric when I do that. You can if you want to but I don't think, well, I don't find this is 100% necessary. Now, the aprons that I sold, I did do that because I wanted the nice, clean edge, but I will say that my original chicken apron, I never did that, and it has not come apart. It, it's still going strong after countless washes and everything else. You do have the kind of fuzzy edge, but it's been just fine. So if you want to do that, you can, but I'm not going to because as it is, I've already got that edge, that double edge um, on the other end, and I just want to do that as little as possible. All right, two inches from the pin. And two inches from the pin. Now when I pinned the strap on, I lined the edge of the strap up with the edge of the folded over hem. So they're they're kind of right there together. And I'm gonna sew them in place.
So I have my apron front side down and I'm going to bring one of the sides over as though I was wrapping it around a person. This is the apron side from the right, so I'm going to take the left strap and I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to attach it to this corner. So left strap to the right corner. Now you can take this right to the very edge of the apron if you want, just like that. But again, my sewing machine is a little archaic and that's a lot of layers of, of fabric right there in the corner. So I'm going to just move it to the inside edge of that um, fold right there, that hem. And pin this into place. Alright. And now I'm going to take the left side of the apron, fold it over, grab the right strap, bring it up, and attach it to the inside of the left of the apron. And again, I'm going to do it right on that inside of the hem. If I had a stronger sewing machine, I would do it right to the corner. And I have in the past, but it's been a serious struggle. <laughs> My sewing machine does not like that. All right, so now I'm going to sew these into place. All right, everything is sewn together, so now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off all of these loose threads that are hanging. So I just gave it a, a final quick ironing and now the apron is finished. And so to put the apron on, I just kind of open like this, put it on over my head. So what I love about these aprons is, first of all, pockets. Uh, you can adjust these pockets, like you can make them lower, you can make them smaller, uh, however you like. Now the chest pocket, as my iron talks back over there, the chest pocket is optional. I really like to have it though because of this. I've got my cell phone with me all the time and if I get a phone call or anything like that, I can put it on speaker and I can just stick it right there in my pocket and I can keep talking to the person and I can still hear them and my hands are still free to keep working and all of that. So I always prefer to have a chest pocket on my apron. Um, that's just my preference, but again, you don't have to add that if you don't want to. And of course the straps crisscross in the back so there's no tying involved. So now the straps that are on this apron from edge right here, to the back edge right there is about 20 and a half inches. If you don't know if this is going to be big enough, if you think you might need uh, a little bit more room within the apron or longer straps, then what I would recommend doing is taking a measuring ribbon. You'd, you'd need some assistance doing this, but take the measuring ribbon, put it at the height on your chest where you would want the front of the uh, apron to be the edge of the apron wrap it over your shoulder and then crisscross go over to just the other side of your spine and have someone look and see where the top of the apron would be on on that side and take that measurement and that will give you a better idea of how long the straps would need to be now you would still need the extra for folding it over and attaching it to the apron. So whatever that measurement would be, add an inch and a half to that, and then that would give you um, the appropriate length of straps, just in case you don't know um, if this would be big enough around and, and give you enough room. Now, I usually wear a large or extra large shirt because I've got kind of thick shoulders and everything. And so um, if you are a fluffier lady, you might need a little bit longer straps to give you a little bit more room in there. And uh, so that might be an option as well. So that is it for today. Uh, like I said, I am not a seamstress. I don't know all the correct terminology and I'm sure there might even be some better ways of doing these sorts of things. But I've had so many people asking me about my farm aprons and how to make them. 
Um, and like I said, I don't have the time to sew and put them in the Etsy shop, um, but maybe you can take the opportunity and do a little sewing and make one for yourself. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I will do my very best to answer them. And hopefully this tutorial kind of shows you um, the gist of it. And I am going to be putting an article on my blog, cosplotoncornbread.com, where I will have this video. And I'll create some diagrams of all of the pieces that I cut with all of the measurements, where the pockets were placed again, and all of that. So thanks for hanging out here in the kitchen with me today. My name is Constance, and I will talk to y'all next time.